Hello, this video is about the making of an end of unit summative assessment, specifically the teacher test. So that comes at the end of the A and I lessons and before the extending and refining lessons before the performance assessment. I'm going to be demonstrating designing an end of unit summative assessment for a high school world history course, but the general principles should apply to other middle and high school courses as well. For this unit, I'm going to be doing one on the French Revolution. And so all of my examples will apply to that, but they really should work regardless of your unit or course. The biggest thing to focus on when designing a unit test is to focus on the skills that you want to be assessing so that it's not just about the making of a test, but it's about testing certain skills. To that purpose, I think one of the most useful things to keep open while you're designing your end of unit test is your unit plan. You should always be referring to this as you design your test and specifically you should be referring to your unit goal. So here mine says students will be able to evaluate the extent to which the French, Latin American, and Haitian revolutions succeeded or failed to embody enlightenment ideals. Now in my unit plan I've got it set up so that the French revolution happens before the teacher test and the Latin American and Haitian revolutions are studied after that. So that means that on my test, my students need to be evaluating the extent to which the French Revolution succeeded or failed to embody enlightenment ideals. When I come to the performance assessment, they'll need to do that for all three of them. I find it helpful when designing a test to start from the end of the test. So instead of starting with my first section and building towards the end, I'm going to start with the last section and work backwards towards the beginning. You want to have some kind of question that is going to come as close as possible to representing that unit goal specifically. I'm going to go with a question trying to get as close as possible to that. So in this case I'm going to have, was the French Revolution a successful realization of enlightenment ideals? That's pretty close to that unit goal. Based on my students answers I will be able to assess whether or not they have met the unit goal. Just a note on directions on tests, whenever possible, you want to be as clear as possible. Ideally, your students should have very few questions during a test. This is important not just for them to be able to work out how the test works, but also to ensure that you give the same directions to every student. Additionally, it's important to be consistent on every test in terms of how you're setting things up. So for example, I ask my students to write a thesis statement using a certain format that we've gone over already. If I want my students to use that on the test, it's important for me to put those same directions on every test. I've got it here on unit six. If on the unit seven test, I don't say use a trap three thesis statement, students are going to notice that change. So you wanna make sure that your test is formatted in a consistent manner. You want them to be focused on completing your test, not on trying to decipher it. One of the reasons for including an essay question on a test is that it's very easy for tests to fall into a simple recall. Do you remember X fact goes with Y definition? Instead, we want our tests to show that our students can engage with material. So for example, this essay is going to be all about evaluating the successes or failings of the French Revolution. That ties in with the unit goal of a, that verb there, evaluate. And also, that's a skill that students can apply in other areas of their lives to assess these kinds of goals, these kinds of movements. But that level of application doesn't necessarily have to be limited to that final piece, to that essay question or whatever format you use in your test. So I always try to put something else on the test as well in an earlier section. So on this test, I'm going to do some primary source analysis. This is one of our key skills in social studies that we're using all the time. And so it's good on a test situation, especially if this is something that I've covered in my unit, to make sure that students are still in a good place with it. Now, as in all things on your test, you want to make sure that this is previously unseen. So if you're going to put a primary source or a political cartoon, if you're going to have students look at a piece of artwork, you want to make sure it's one that they haven't seen before. So in this case, I've got the Declaration of the Rights of Women by Olympe de Gouges, uh, and I've got an excerpt here that I've selected that I think highlights some of the Enlightenment ideas in the French Revolution. So then my students will read over that passage. Again, this is something that they're used to, so they expect to see a primary source or a political cartoon, something like that on their tests. And when they come down here, they know that in response to this primary source, there are going to be a series of questions. Just like 
the questions on the whole test build up gradually in terms of what I'm asking them to do, the questions in each section can also build in that way. So at the beginning, it's identification, finding places in which she bases her declaration on enlightenment ideals. From there, they then need to explain those ideas. So they're raising the verb, but still engaging with this primary source. And then finally, they need to put the information from this document together with information they know from elsewhere in the unit, connecting it to a time when people in the French Revolution tried to introduce this idea and to see to which extent they were successful or unsuccessful. The other key piece of this is that if they do a good job on this question, this kind of information about Olympe de Gouges, the events that are being put into place to try and meet these goals, can also feed them as they try to answer the essay. Your whole test should be built around that idea so that as they work through the test, they're building a word bank, they're building an assembly of knowledge that can help them on the next section of the test and ultimately on that essay question. So that by the time students reach the essay on this test, they have lots of examples of events in the French Revolution and ways in which they're tying to the Enlightenment. And that way, the test really fits together as a cohesive whole to get back to this unit goal of evaluating. I think another valuable thing to do in the design of your test is to give your students opportunities for choices. This will help them to feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more in control of the test that they're taking, and it'll allow them to play to their strengths a little bit. And since you decide on what the choices are, you can still make sure that you're assessing the information that you need from them. I usually provide choice in the short answer section. So on this test, I'm going to give my students three short answer questions. and I'm going to ask them to answer two of them. Again, the goal is that these short answers will demonstrate some of the knowledge that I expect to see about the French Revolution, but also will help fill in that word bank so that they can answer the essay question at the end of the test. So here I've got three different uh, short answer questions emphasizing uh, different stages of the French Revolution, the three estates, the goals of different groups in the early phases of the revolution, and Napoleon at the end of the French Revolution. This allow, allows students to choose the section that's going to work best for them, get that done, and then move on instead of staring at a blank sheet of paper for a while because they can't answer the one question that's been assigned to them. I think that's a really important thing to do. I always do multiple choice last. This is partially because it's the hardest. It is challenging to make a good multiple choice question, but also because of that goal of making it so that your test builds a word bank for that last essay question. If my unit goal is to have my students evaluating to what extent the French Revolution embodies enlightenment ideals, then the part of this test that I'm going to care the most about is that essay question, where that question is being asked. So that means the multiple choice section should be something that feeds into that rather something than something that stands apart. That also means that the multiple choice should not be where most of the points are. That's not where the unit goal is. So I try to limit myself to about 10 multiple choice questions per test and definitely no more than 12 to 15 at the absolute most. That said, there are different kinds of multiple choice questions. For example, there's going to be your very straightforward sort of vocab knowledge question, like the meaning of the word plebiscite, which means a vote of the people. So that's a pretty simple vocab question. You're not going to want a lot of those, although it's okay to have a few, again, helping students to build that word bank. But more so, you're going to want multiple choice questions that ask your students to do a little bit more thinking. So maybe it's analyzing a painting maybe making some connections between different periods or different people. So drawing a comparison between Robespierre and King Louis XVI. I also like to do these multiple choice questions that involve analyzing a painting or a cartoon, or even analyzing a really short primary source excerpt. So if they do the multiple choice, for example, here, and then the short answer, the primary source, and then the essay, they'll be showing their understanding of the unit goal, the information in the unit, in a way that builds to higher and higher levels, just like your a &I lesson plans do, it's gonna build over the course of your test as well, so that by that last section of the test, they should be achieving the unit goal.